फाइव सेकेंड स्टार्ट मिस्टर वाइस चेयरमैन सर आई वुड लाइक टू स्पीक ऑन दिस बिल इन द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द रैपिड इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ इन द कंट्री इफ द नेशन ग्रोज फ्रॉम स्ट्रेंथ टू स्ट्रेंथ इकोनॉमिकली लीडिंग टू इरेडिकेशन ऑफ द डिग्रेडिंग एंड डिसहर्टनिंग पोवर्टी ऑफ द पीपल ऑफ इंडिया द वर्कर्स ऑफ दिस नेशन वुड ऑल्सो बेनिफिट एंड दे वुड ऑल्सो गो अबोव द पोवर्टी लाइन सर आई वुड लाइक टू मैंशन हेयर दैट द प्लांटेशन क्रॉप्स एज अंडरस्टूड बाय द टर्म सो फार नेमली कॉफी रबर टी एंड कार्डम हैव बीन गिविंग दिस नेशन सब्सटांशियल अमाउंट ऑफ द मच कोवेटेड फॉरन एक्सचेंज एनुअली इट मस्ट बी नोटेड दैट कॉफी एक्सपोर्ट्स अलोन हैव गिवन आवर कंट्री ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट फाइव ईयर्स ओवर रुपीज थाउजेंड करोड़ इन फॉरन एक्सचेंज बाई वे ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट अर्निंग्स एंड एक्सपोर्ट ड्यूटीज I must also bring to the attention of this house that the famed tea industry in India today has become a sick industry affecting lakhs of workers and the tea planters sir we ought to know that in the agricultural sector the plantation labor is the best organized one and is getting nearly the same treatment facilities and amenities like the industrial labor sir coming from a plantation district of karnataka i sincerely agree that the welfare measures provided in the act must be faithfully implemented and strictly enforced but i cannot subscribe to the view taken by some that the planters generally are exploiters and are inimical to the interests of their own workers and that they must be dealt with severely sir most of the planters of today are educated and they know that contented labor is conducive to productivity and peace in the estates and therefore would like to provide all the welfare measures and amenities to the workers sir i would like to point out some of the very draconian discriminatory and invidious urban directed amendments made in the plantations labor amendment bill 1973 Sir the Plantations Labour Act is sought to be applied now even to holdings of 5 hectares and above employing 15 persons and more Originally in the bill brought before the joint committee it was sought to be applied to holdings of 6.5 hectares and above it would be realistic to make an amendment to the present bill to raise the size of holdings from 5 hectares to 6.5 hectares sir we must bear in mind the economic viability of small plantations of 5 hectares and the financial capacity of the small planters to fulfill the obligations cast on them to provide housing and creche facilities those small planters in some cases are unable to provide themselves with houses and medical care as good as those intended for their workers in the bill i am sure that good many small holdings will go into liquidation unable to bear the burden when the prices fall as in the case of tea today i would empathetically say that 
क्लॉज थर्टीन इज नॉट ओनली ड्रेकोनियन बट डिस्क्रिमिनेटरी एंड इट इज मोस्ट हार्स एंड किलिंग टू द फार्मिंग कम्युनिटी ऑफ इंडिया हुज हैंड्स फीड एंड क्लोथ द पीपल पुअर एंड रिच सर आई स्ट्रांगली फील दैट द पनिशमेंट विथ बोथ कंपल्सरी फाइन एंड इम्प्रिजनमेंट इज टू सेवियर for violation of a welfare legislation covered by the act for economic reasons and financial incapacity the debt ridden employer particularly a small holder may be unable to discharge the obligations such as providing type design houses creches medical facilities etc in such cases there is no point sending the land holder to jail and collecting a fine from him for every day of default the relevant provisions in the bill are made more stringent than the factories act under which in the case of a further offence the court is given the discretion to punish the defaulting employer but in the proposed amendment the word used is shall instead of may which makes it mandatory on the court to impose imprisonment as well as fine these provisions are too harsh and discriminatory particularly in view of the fact that the bill seeks to bring in farms of 5 hectares which are in the nature of peasant holdings under the act sir i would like to ask the government of the people for the people and by the people in the name of the farmers of india why it wants to treat a farmer as a criminal and to be imprisoned for such an offence while it does not do so for a factory owner of a city by making this comparison i do not mean that a provision should be made in the relevant factories act to make the sentence of imprisonment compulsory for similar offences let me make it clear that i am not speaking against the interests of the workers in the plantations i am only speaking against the stringent and invidious measures which have been provided in the bill affecting the rural employers and the invidious laws enacted for them